Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Demir Dragons. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. We are continuing the theme today as we kick off this Monday. Uh, we're keeping with the rotation proof theme. So we've done a pretty good job over the last week of just exploring some ideas, exploring some decks, and trying some things that really and truly are not super viable, but uh, are pretty fun to explore. And hopefully, uh, once rotation does happen, might get a few new tools along the way. Today is a little bit different in the sense that this is basically just a control deck. And so the idea of, you know, getting a lot of new cards for it and things like that are most likely going to be more upgrading and not necessarily like changing a whole lot out. Uh, but there is a really nice shell here that I'm excited to try out. And so we're going to do that today. Uh, I am calling this Demir Dragons because we get Kyrie and Junji in this list, uh, which is pretty fun. And they're both usable uh, as well, which I think is obviously pretty important. Uh, and by usable, I mean, basically, no matter what, they're going to hit something or they're going to do something, but we can utilize all the abilities. Um, so to walk through this just briefly, uh, again, no uh, Professor Onyx, anything like that, because that is going to rotate out. Uh, but we do have Soren as our one Planeswalker for the deck. I think Soren is very good. Uh, four mana Planeswalker does quite a bit for us. Uh, in the early turns of the game, we are looking to do a little bit of discard. So we've got Dredge Fuge and we've got Duress. Uh, those, I think, are, you know, you could play around with those a little bit, maybe do something different. But I actually like discard. I think it's a relatively uh, good option to have especially <coughs> excuse me uh with the silent spider which we are going to look to play later on in the game so this is going to take advantage of that discard later on uh we do also have siphon insight as a three of as a way to kind of steal the opponent's game plan a little bit uh tainted indulgence does give us a little bit of card draw if we have to discard it's not the end of the world because again both Kyrie and Junji give us ways to kind of bring some stuff back uh which is kind of sick uh, we do have Infernal Grasp and the Meat Hook Massacre for, for uh, a little bit of removal. So the Meat Hook does give us that, that board sweep opportunity. Worth noting, Blood on the Snow will not be viable anymore after rotation. And so that's why we are not going with, obviously, uh, that tactic. Uh, because I did want to make this rotation proof. We do have Path of Peril, though, which is playable just based on lands. But we also have the Celestis as an opportunity uh, to kind of play off of that. And, of course, the Celestis does ramp. <clears throat> um, soul transfer uh, I think just a really good removal spell um, we do have artifacts and uh, enchantments didn't I I thought I put oh yes duh the meat hook massacre uh, in the deck uh, and so there is actually the potential for doing both sides of this uh, but even just picking one is perfectly reasonable and so I'm excited to have that in the deck uh, graveyard trespasser is kind of a mid-range threat uh, along with the Soren because I do think this is just one of the better creatures one it provides exile two it does take a discard which again we get to capitalize on uh, and it gains you life throughout the game so definitely useful we've got a little bit of a Gain life sub theme a little bit with that Celestis as well. Uh, Invoke Despair is one of the big spells that we may want to try and bring, bring back, excuse me, with uh, Kyrie. Uh, just a ridiculous, ridiculous card in my opinion. Uh, and so I'm very happy to see say we have three of those in the deck. I didn't go for the full four, uh, trying to keep the curve a little bit lower, uh, which I think is important. Um, and then the rest of the deck is, of course, just big, beefy, scary things. So. That's the deck. Uh, we're going to give this a shot, guys. Hopefully have some fun with it and maybe get a win or two in. Uh, these will probably go a little long, so just be be aware we may only get one or two games in. Uh, hopefully at least two, but just warning you. So let's do it. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Uh, I think this is perfectly reasonable to keep. We do have the Siphon Insight to kind of jump off with early, and then Soul Transfer into Soren uh, is pretty reasonable because, again, we can bring these back if need be. So we're going to give this a shot, guys. Let's see what we can do. We're against Sir McWright. Love that. Uh, also worth noting, guys, we do have a giveaway going on right now for Dominaria United. I've been trying to mention it in most of the videos. If you are interested in that giveaway, <clears throat> excuse me, one way to enter is by simply just subscribing. Uh, super easy, it's free to do, it's a great way to support the channel, and you might get a free draft booster box of the brand new set. So definitely encourage you guys to check that out. Uh, there's other ways to enter. There's a video on our landing page. <clears throat> excuse me, I have a little cough today. 
Uh, as well, there is also um, the uh, article over on our website at resolvesmtg.com. Uh, definitely going to take Shigeki. Look at that. Uh, that's pretty good. Not going to lie. Um, all right. So, I mean, I think we just go Celestis uh, to give ourselves that extra ramp opportunity. They have already got the mascot exhibition, but we actually have the Meat Hook Massacre available. So, really, I'm not as worried about that. Um, I'd love to get the Soren down this upcoming turn. If we get a land, we should be okay. Uh, this Simic deck, by the way, is definitely a deck I have seen around a little. Um, kind of a, de uh, a frustrating deck to play against, for sure. Uh, but we'll see if we can get there. Alright. Uh, not a land, uh, sadly, but I think that's okay. I am going to go for the Soren here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now the question becomes, do we, first of all, do we get countered, but second of all, do we plus up or do we minus? Um, I'm actually going to plus up because we do want to hit a land, uh, and this helps us get there. Uh, uh, that's not a land, but I think we take it regardless. Uh, this also does get it out of range of the Topiary Stomper on its own, uh, and it draws us further into the deck. So I do think this is a more reasonable uh, way to go, especially because, of course, we don't have uh, a huge life loss deficit to, to make up for at this point. Although it's going to get big pretty quickly, given they've got, well, Coma. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's super scary. Um, worth noting, this does get around the... Uh, the indestructible though which is quite nice um all right so we let that hit we do draw a land Whew, that's very good um let's go ahead and plus up one more time give me a land yes excellent excellent okay uh perfect that's actually very good uh so we basically have to go ahead and do this now i don't really think we have a better option here so we're just gonna go ahead and straight up answer the coma. Uh, I don't believe, yeah, so the indestructible doesn't get around this. Uh, this is an easy way to, to kill coma. Really love soul transfer for that reason. Gets around indestructible. I hope they go for it. <laughs> just because it'd be funny. Wow, they did go for it. It's exile, bro. Uh, yeah, okay, sick. Um, that's actually really funny. Uh, do we Dreadfuge or do we just Shigeki? I'm gonna just Shigeki. Let's go ahead and play it. Uh, if nothing else, it'll block for us. I don't particularly care to keep it around. It does give us lands, but, uh, it goes back to the owner's hand, so it's not really helpful to do. And we actually, I mean, we can use it, uh, once, but it's not really what we want to do, if that makes sense. Uh, so I think I'd rather just let it die. <laughs> uh, yep. I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, I want to keep Soren around as best we can, given that uh, even though we do have another one in hand, of course, um, it gives us all that extra card draw uh, for basically free, and we don't have to invest four mana in the other one, which is important. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and plus once more. Another land would be perfectly fine. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so... How do we want to handle this? Uh, we do have the Silent Spider uh, with not a lot in the graveyard. Uh, alternatively, we can do this for three, four, and just sweep the board. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, for one mana, I don't know that there's a lot they could have here to, to deal with this. They might have like a Snakeskin Veil to, to save one of the creatures, which is fine. Or a Fading Hope, that's fine too. Don't particularly care. Um, the idea is not for us to to win off of the Meat Hook Massacre. It's just to slow them down enough so we can start taking over. Uh, and that life gain is nice, too. It just protects us a little bit. Uh, I do really like this deck. Uh, I've really enjoyed this deck. I playtested only a couple times with it, and um, despite it not having like the Blood on the Snow tactic, Lolf, like, a lot of really important things still seems pretty reasonable um not perfect don't get me wrong but uh it's not bad all right so definitely just play land let's go ahead and uh hit him with that invoke despair really quick gonna hit him for some uh get one creature off the board and then of course uh we get to draw two and 
deal a little damage to him, which I like. Uh, let's make sure. I am gonna dread fuge. Let's just see. Uh, I don't anticipate this hitting anything. Nope, that's fine. Um, and then I think we'll just drop a, a little two three here. Nothing too crazy, of course, but uh, it does keep us in the game. They are stuck on a pair of Quandrix cultivators, which are good, but not really going to save them very long. Um, and really, our goal is just keep control of the board until we can get... I mean, we can drop the Silence Fighter. Not a bad way to go. Uh, I'd love to get another Meat Hook and just sweep again, uh, knowing that they don't have a ton in hand at this point. But we'll see. Uh, I'm really enjo enjoying this deck. This is a fun one. I love a good control deck, and it's been a while since I've really played a true control deck, so this is this is pretty fun. Uh, do they have a follow-up play? Looks like no. All right, let's definitely plus. Uh. Oh. All right. I guess we uh, whittled them down enough uh, that we were able to get the win. We didn't have it, uh, to be honest, but I'll take it. That was awesome. Game one is done, guys. Let's move into game two. Check out this month's Patreon rewards, celebrating our return to Dominaria. If you want to pick these up, feel free to visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, everybody, here we are for game number two. This is definitely an easy keep. Uh, don't love the fact that this is a tap to land, obviously, but that actually solves the problem. So let's go ahead and duress turn one. Get a nice little peek at the opponent's hand here. Uh, I think it's just wedding announcement. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just wedding announcement. I don't particularly care about the rest. That's not a very well-suited hand for dealing with us, uh, to be honest. And so I think that's just the most impactful card. The modern age was also a continue or a uh, a consideration, excuse me, solely from the standpoint of I mean it draws them a card. <laughs> Uh, which is annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, and we'll see what they decide to do. We do have the Tainted Indulgence that we can go ahead and throw out. They just went for getting rid of the touch. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and Tainted Indulgence. Uh, I think we get rid of the Waterfront District. I did put the District in there, guys, uh, just so you know, as a way of... Um, drawing a little extra later on uh which i think is worthwhile uh we let's go ahead and get the brine whatever thing out of there just so they can't replay it uh it is worthwhile because it does give you that that card draw ability when you don't have another way of doing it so worth noting that it's an important piece to the puzzle it's only as a one of uh but i do really like that card so it's definitely i think worth having okay uh let's think through really quick I think we just drop the tower uh, and then go ahead and duress once more. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, I think we take the depopulate. Uh, not positive on that, but I will do it. Um, we'll just get rid of this. They do have the rune, which I don't love. Um, that's definitely going to be a bit of an annoyance for us, but we do have the the Junji coming down, we can definitely out-pressure them in terms of power. Uh, it's just a matter of, I mean, they do have a touch the spirit realm. They've got some other good stuff. I just didn't want them to sweep necessarily. Maybe that was incorrect. I don't know. Uh, okay. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, it definitely gets a card out of hand, so let's do it. Uh, let's see if they've got a response. Okay, they have a disdainful stroke. Fair enough. Uh, you got it. We are going to go ahead and get that out of there. Uh, just hit for three. Nothing too crazy, of course, but um, I'm going to leave our uh, Silent Spider in here because we do have a Junji at some point that we're going to want to play. Uh, they do have the answer for it, technically, uh, but we'll see if they actually keep it out. Um, nice. Nice. Let's definitely go ahead and play this. Uh, let's get the attack in. Exile both of the graveyard cards. Okay. Five, 
not quite at the the stance where we can play both of these cards but Junji is a bit of a must answer for them so I'm assuming they're gonna get the touch the spirit realm down here on the Junji um, I feel like that's probably just the best bet uh, it also is gonna power them up a little bit here we do have the tainted indulgence which is gonna be potentially really helpful if we can get um, a meat hook massacre but we are gonna have to invest quite a bit of mana uh, so maybe that was a situation where we kind of messed up nope never mind um okay we did it um let's just let's just poke the bear let's just see um i think i will now go ahead and do this uh knowing that the the uh the junji is kind of out of commission at this point let's hit for four they only have one mana available, so I didn't expect they were going to have a lot to do there. Uh, but they do get to draw some cards off of this wizard class. This is a really prime example, by the way, of the issue of playing a rotation proof deck in a non-rotated standard environment. Uh, they obviously are going to have, you know, more tools at their, their capacity, things like that, whereas we just won't. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the reality of doing it. Uh, but it is a little bit of a struggle. That's okay. They are gonna counter this? Wow. Sure. I mean, that's fine. I don't... Uh, that would have been a really risky move, I feel like, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and be proactive here and just get rid of this. Um, this deck thins for them as well, so it's worth noting that that's not necessarily the right play, but it deck thins for us, uh, which I also think is probably worthwhile, so... All right. Uh, we basically just need to not draw lands, so that's where I'm coming from with that. All right. Uh, Path of Peril isn't terrible against the uh, Hollowed Haunting here, but obviously we can't really get get uh, any activation out of it at this moment in time, so that's fine. Ah, now I'm wishing we did have the... Uh, well, I guess... I mean, we'll do this because we have nothing else going on. Um, it's not really a great play <laughs> overall, but I'll take it. Uh, let's get the rune out of there. Oh, it actually, we could have gotten two cards. Totally didn't even realize. Doesn't matter too much, I don't think, but uh, I think we definitely get rid of that. Okay. It's fine. Uh, don't particularly care, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's force the issue here a little bit. Um, okay. I'll go ahead and siphon. Uh, ugh. Wow, that was terrible. Play your island. <laughs> and we will attack for one. There's no reason not to. Uh, what an interesting game this has turned out to be. Uh, Witness Protection, not a card I would normally expect, uh, to be honest. Wow, they doubled up on the Witness Protection. That's really funny. Um, I think we Siphon Insight. Man, again, seriously. Getting super unlucky with these. Uh, We'll just go ahead and get this last card out of hand, I guess. Potentially. Oh, it's just a land. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Ping for one. Technically, we win this race, so... <laughs> I'm honestly more upset that we siphoned Insight for basically just two basic lands at this point. That's a really unexciting play, isn't it? <laughs> uh, okay. I do like this, so we'll auto-pay here. Um, I'm just gonna do this this is such a bad use of <laughs> path of peril to be honest it's like a really terrible way of doing it but it's fine um yeah we'll take the action cool it's a really good one to hit because we can actually still play it so i'm very happy with that all right let's siphon insight <laughs> don't hit lands Ooh. um hmm uh, the other one goes on the bottom, so I think we'll take the Modern Age, actually. 
Uh, the reason being, we can't really capitalize on the hollowed haunting all those well, all that well. Uh, whereas obviously they can, so naturally I'm just happy to throw that on the bottom of the deck. Um, sure. Nice. I like it. See, this is where we should have probably waited on the path of peril, but it's fine. Um. All right, let's do it. Mine as well. Uh, this also fuels the, the fire a little bit for the modern age, so we're able to use this, and since we will be able to draw a card off of this. Yeah, that's a perfect one, too. Alright, let's do this. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and... I'm just doing this because we really don't have anything else to do. Um, <laughs> that's a very good one. <laughs> Um, I don't think we attack knowing that they've got this little guy. Uh, I'm going to decline. We obviously really like the card in our hand. <laughs> um, borrowed time. Okay. Curious what they actually want to hit because I don't, I don't think, I mean, that's fine. It's perfectly fine. I don't particularly care. Um, that's very good, obviously. They obviously get to draw off of that. This has been a really interesting game. This is going to be our only other game, unfortunately, guys. Just a heads up. Uh, but, I mean, this has been a really good one. I'm very happy with this. Uh, let's look at our graveyard really quick. So I think it's that that we need to discard, unfortunately. This is a very unexciting turn because they can just hit these two, but we actually get to draw a card off of the deal, which is why I wanted to go for this. Um, pretty unexciting, truthfully, because, again, they sacrifice a Spirited Companion or something. Really? They're going to casualty this out. Um, I think I will auto-pay. It's not a very great play, I don't know. I I don't think, but like we get to we still get to draw a card off of it, which is kind of the important piece. Um, I'm curious to see what they actually. Wow, it was that. Okay. Um, excellent. That's actually really helpful. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Well. I'm actually gonna save this uh, because obviously it's a hollowed haunting deck. So interesting. Okay. So I assume they're gonna go for the graveyard trespasser. No. Fascinating. Okay. I think we take it. Um, they get to draw a card. I know, but I think that's okay. There's a world where we might be able to get somewhere with this. Um, I don't know what world it is, but there's a world. Path of Peril would be really helpful. <laughs> really should not have pulled the trigger on that Path of Peril. That was definitely a mistake. I think we probably would have not, maybe not won, but definitely gotten a lot closer. <laughs> um, all right, let's make sure we're playing the Soren because we could just draw something really awesome. I will go for it. That's less awesome. Um, all right, so I don't think we reveal that. Let's go here. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think it matters too much, unfortunately. We'll go ahead and bounce this guy. Um, but I think we're just dead, right? They just have plenty to uh to kill us so we can block three things but yeah I, they definitely have us that was a really good game though actually i'm very happy with that wow and they had a brilliant restoration all right well sick uh guys let's go ahead and talk about this all right so demir dragons unfortunately i i may rename uh because i we didn't actually get to play any of the dragons really we played junji but didn't last very long uh all in all though how do we feel about this um pretty good 
I actually really liked it. I know that last game was a little, like, tricky, uh, to be fair, um, but we were not out of it until the very last turn, in my view. Uh, we actually still remained, I think, a, a very strong contender in that game for quite a while, so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, certainly, um, some, some changes to make and maybe some improvements to make, so if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. I'd really appreciate it. But uh, overall, I liked it. Felt pretty good. Um, I really like the Path of Peril play. Potentially upping that just a little bit or balancing it with the Meat Hook Massacre a bit more uh, might be useful. Uh, but overall, I mean, it did pretty well. I was pretty happy with it. So uh, really do appreciate you guys watching this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good start to your week. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys tomorrow for some more gameplay videos.